In this example, we are going to verify some set identities. We already worked this exact same problem using Venn diagrams on the previous example. We're going to do work with the same identities, but we're going to prove it in a very different way. Instead of using Venn diagrams to establish the identities, we're actually going to use logical symbols and logical um, operator manipulations to show that these identities are true. So what we worked with in the last problem in part A was this identity, that the set A difference with B is equal to the set A difference with quantity A intersect B. So we already established this with Venn diagrams, we know it's true. Well, let's do it in a different way using logical symbols. So the way that we're going to do this is we are going to start with some arbitrary element of one of our sets. So I've decided in this problem to go ahead and start from this side. So I'm choosing an arbitrary element from this set. So we're going to say x is in the set a difference a intersect b. So by definition, what does it mean for x to be in this set? That means that x is in a, and x is not in a intersect b. So all we're using right here is the definition of the set difference operator. What does it, what does it mean to be in a set difference? It means I'm in this, and I'm not in that. That's what the set difference operator means. So all we've done is write out our original logical statement here. We've just manipulated it a little bit using the definition of set difference to get rid of that slash and write out a logically equivalent statement that still means the exact same thing. So I haven't changed anything. I've just manipulated its form. Okay, so let's keep doing things like that. So let's keep the first part alone. X is in A and what does it mean for X to be not in the set? Well, that's the same thing as not x in a intersect b, right? I can either say I am not in this set, or I can use my not in set symbol. Okay, that's those are totally equivalent statements. So I haven't changed anything. I've just changed what the expression looks like. Let's keep going. X is in a and not. So what does it mean for x to be in a intersect b? Well, that means that x is in A and x is in B. And to do this simplification, we've just used the definition of set intersection. That's exactly what it means for x to be in an intersection, is it's in both of the sets. So I haven't changed what this logical statement means, I've just changed what it looks like. I've replaced my intersection with different logical symbols that mean the exact same thing, because intersection means that I'm in both sets. So let's keep going. Let's write this as x is x in a, and I'm going to go ahead and use De Morgan's law here, right? Anytime we have a not in front of something, I can distribute that not using De Morgan's, right? I can put that like that. I have to flip my and symbol to an or symbol, and then I have to put my not there. So I've distributed the not across everything by using De Morgan's law. Okay, so that's something that we know how to do. So now I have this logical expression. What's the next step? For the next step, I'm going to go ahead and write this down. What have I done here? So if you look at this, you can see that I've distributed x is in a across this term right here. So all I've done is use the distributive law. Okay. So I've used the distributive law to write it like this. Okay. If we look at this, what is this statement right here? x in a and not x in a. Well, that is always false. I can't be in a and not be in a. So that is what we call a contradiction. So right here, this part of my whole logical expression, I have this very long logical expression, part of it is a contradiction. I have a contradiction ORed with this other statement. Well, we can write that as just the other statement by the contradiction law. So if we go back to our contradiction law, we, anytime we have a contradiction ORed with something that is equal, identical to just the something by the contradiction law. So I've been able to manipulate this original statement, x is in the set A difference A intersect B. I've manipulated it into this form. We have just a few more steps left. What does it mean for x to be in A and not x in B? Well, that means that x is in A difference B. Right, that is just the definition of set difference again. Okay, So starting with this statement up here in the green box, x is in a difference 
A intersect B, we've shown that that is logically equivalent to X is in A diff B. Okay. If we did the exact same steps backwards, start with this, and then go backwards, we would get back to here. So whether we start with an element of X in A diff A intersect B, or start with an element X in A diff B, we can always get to the other equivalent logical expression. So that establishes that these two sets are indeed equal quantities. Let's work another one. What about the other expression we examined? A union B intersect C equal to A union B intersect A union C. Let's do the same thing. Let's pick an arbitrary element from the left side and let's start manipulating that in two different forms. So what does it mean for X to be in A union it means that x is in A or x is in the other thing by the definition of set union. Okay, let's keep going. We'll leave the first part alone. x is in A or what does it mean for x to be in the intersection? That means it's in B and x is in C by definition of set, union, or set intersection. Okay, so we've replaced this symbol with a logically equivalent expression. Now what am I going to do? I'm using the distributive law again, right? I'm distributing x is in A across this term. So I'm just using the distributive law that we know. So I haven't changed a lot there. What is this first statement equal to? This first statement, x is in A or x is in B, by definition, it means x is in A union B. That's what it means to be in the union of sets. Same thing here. This is just, by definition, the union of two sets. So from this line to this line, all I've done is use the definition of set union. Okay. What does it mean for x to be in a set and in another set? That by definition is the definition of set intersection. So starting off with x in A union B intersect C, we have been able to show that x is in a union B intersect A union C using just a few manipulations. If we did it the other way, start off here at the bottom, we could also work back towards the top. So no matter what element we pick from a set, it's in the other set. Pick an element from the left-hand set, it's in the right-hand set. Pick an element from the right-hand set, it's in the left-hand set. So by definition, these sets are equal. and We've established this set equality. We've just done it in a different way. The first example we did it with Venn diagrams. In this example we're doing it using logical symbols and the distributive law and definitions of set intersections and set unions and things like that. Both of them are very legitimate valid ways to work problems like this.